life for the Mount Gilead Lady Indians. Cardington losing earlier today. Allowing Mount Gilead with the win over the Fredericktown Lady Freddies to be one game back ahead of their matchup later next week. But the Fredericktown Lady Freddies, they're back to full strength, looking to pull off the upset and play spoiler. We got all the action coming your way on your smartphone, TV, PC, tablet, any smart device you have, and it's coming your way next. National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. Welcome you inside the Ohio Means Jobs Morrow County pregame show live and free on this Saturday evening. Travis Berardi alongside Joshua Banks as Mount Gilead hosting the Fredericktown Lady Freddies and the meaningfulness of this game got a little bit more important for Mount Gilead tonight, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. We found out earlier that East Knox knocks off Cardington this afternoon which means Mount Gilead can come in tonight, take down the Lady Freddies, and have that game coming up at the end of the season with Cardington be for a KMAC Ladies Championship. But standing in their way, the Lady Freddies of Fredericktown as we, as we take a look at their team spotlight, four and 12, one and eight in conference under head coach Tim Maseko. They've had a lot of injuries this season. Finally, they're almost back to 100%. 23rd in the Division III Central District, according, according to Martin RPI. So a win against Mount Gilead would go a long way to boost them up a couple seed lines. Offensively scoring 42.6 points per game. Defensively, though, allowing 46.8. 41% inside the arc, 24% outside, and they shoot 61%. Taking a look at one of the reasons why they are getting back to being competitive. And it is the sensational freshman, Ella Bouton. The freshman forward, seventh in the KMAC, 10.3 points per game, 5.5 rebounds per game, which is ninth in the KMAC, 2.4 assists, which is fifth, and even 1.3 blocks, which is second in the KMAC, behind her sister, Jill, who has over two. So already breaking the top 10 in every category for Ella. Yeah, Ella, an absolute stat sheet stuffer. Top 10 in the KMAC in four different categories. Four of the most important categories you ask for out of a basketball player. So it's going to be really fun to watch her play tonight. And now let's take a look at the home standing Lady Indians of Mount Gilead High School. Under head coach Nick Vukovic, 12 and 5. They're 6 and 3. And a win would put them one game behind Cardington, like we said. They play them next Saturday in the 
KMAC finale. They're fourth in the D4 Central District, 14th overall in Region 15 as well. So they can they could possibly win out. They could get a top four seed and a good chance at picking where they want to play and the easiest route to possibly a district final appearance. Offensively, 46.9%. Defensively, very good. They're only giving up 35.9%. And one of the players to watch tonight for them is one Madeline Elson. Scored 11 points in their last matchup on December 17th. Averages 12.8 points, which is second in the conference. 2.2 assists, which is sixth. And 2.7 steals per game, which is second. Another great player in the conference, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. She does a great job doing everything she needs to do to make her team better. As we bring you back here to the court, as we get ready for the playing of our national anthem and here inside the Ohio Means Jobs Morrow County pregame show. Big day of basketball already as Loudonville took care of Lucas behind National Player of the Week, Corey Vermilia. Also another game going on, it's at halftime. Carey and Colonel Crawford boys, that's for first place in the conference. And then this one, Mount Gilead with a chance to get back into the conference race. But we're gonna send it down on the floor for the playing of the National Anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Just about ready to go between these two teams in the Knox Morrow Athletic Conference. And now let's take a look at our keys to the game. First for the visiting Freddies of Fredericktown. And I got their keys down as play spoiler. They once again can pretty much knock out Mount Gilead from the conference conversation with the win tonight. And it's a new season. You have your you have your main players back out on the court. Grace Sipes after hurting her ankle in the preseason. She's back out there. Kip Bellman as well. You have Carpenter and the Bouton sisters as well playing good basketball. So it's a new season. You gotta get some wins, maybe boost up your seating a little bit. Then anything can happen if you get a good matchup in the tournament. Absolutely. It's a new season like you said, Travis. You know, gotta get rolling now before the tournament time rolls around. And what better time to start getting all your players back than right before the most important part of the season tournament time. And now let's take a look at the keys to the game for the Lady Indians of Mount Gilead. A New Hope. Yes, that is also a Star Wars movie, but a new hope for them after Cardington losing at the dog pound this afternoon. They control their destiny to at least a share of the KMAC championship. And by doing that, they need to ground the flight. They need to really shut down the three-point scoring threat from the Fredericktown Lady Freddies in order to have a chance at that matchup next Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. And the Lady Freddies adding Gracie Sipes back really just did nothing but increase that three-point shooting that we've seen all year long. So the Lady Indians are going to have to do a really good job of containing the three-point line 
force them to feed the ball down low where you've got the Bowden sisters containing the paint and make them beat you there. Just about ready to go, and I will go over the starting lineup for you. Kit Bellman, Grace Sipes, Callie Carpenter, Jill Bowden, Ella Bowden, all starting for the Lady Freddies. As for Mount Gilead, Candace Milliser, Ava Baker, Lydia Stallnaker, Madeline Elson, and Grace Shipman. So we are just about ready to go here from Mount Gilead High School, as you see on the bottom line. All the games that we've had so far this week, highlights and live streams included, the scores from those games, as well as the halftime score from tonight's Carey Crawford game. Final game on the schedule for the OH Report this week. And we are ready to go. Tip one by the Lady Freddies and quickly ahead. Layup shot too strong, Mount Gilead will get their first possession. Shipman works it around. Milliser prevents the steal. Shipman again, kicking it around. Five out look by Mount Gilead as they miss their first three-point attempt. Long rebound out to Grace Sipes. Just underway here. Sipes to the lane, turns it over. And that's how we're going to begin here. Yeah, Grace kind of tries to do a little bit too much there, getting into the lane, dribbles off her own knee, turnover to start the game for the Lady Freddies. So possession number two for the Lady Indians. And it's stolen away. Into the lane, Carpenter puts it up and in. Fredericktown gets the first points as Carpenter scores. Yeah, Callie did a great job of reading the passing lane. And once she gets in a run out, there aren't very many people that are going to catch her. Elson backs it out. Skip pass over to Baker. Now the Shipman, it takes it right down Main Street. Nobody stopped. They're kind of surprised her, but she scores. We're tied at two. Yeah, great tape there by Shipman. She went right through the middle of the zone and – Kind of threw up a little bit of a circus shot, but when it goes down, it goes down. Two all. Ella Bouton nearly got it stripped, picks her dribble up, goes baseline, kicks it back out, and over to Jill. Jill, nice pass inside, layup shot. Missed, no good. Mount Gilead back at it. Three in the air, swish. Elson makes it 5-2. That's a great shot by Elson. And we'll get a foul as we take a look at our first BS Media Productions replay of the evening. Working it around. So that foul was against Shipman, her first. Sipes. Got it stripped away by Shipman. And tackled, incidental tackle, but both players were okay as we take a look at the replay. Great hustle by Ella trying to get back on defense. Just a little bit too aggressive as she got down to the other end of the floor. Ella Bouton, her first foul. Milliser. Worked around, but that's thrown away. Both teams now with two turnovers early on. Sipes kicks it back out. Bouton, 4-3, short. But Carpenter's there with the rebound. However, we'll get a tie-up and a change of possession. 5-2 here. Two and a half minutes gone by. The trap works for Grace Sipes. And nearly gave it back, but Fredericktown now down three. 
Try and even this up or get it to two. Three in the air, way short. Rebound to Mount Gilead. Yeah, Ella probably forced that one there. Kind of an unnecessary shot. Maybe move the ball around, get it into your offense a little bit more before you just hoist the three ball up. Shipman, she's going to try another three. Air balled that. And the Lady Freddies back at it with 4.30 left in the opening quarter. Carpenter, she'll put up a three. Swish. <laughs> Callie with five. It's 5-5. Five, five. No hesitation in Callie's game. And we'll get a kick and another look at the swish. Nothing but nylon for Callie Carpenter. The screen from Ella Bouton gives her just enough space to be able to elevate and knock down the three ball. That ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Mount Gilead here with 4-12 left in the opening quarter. Shipman into the lane, puts one up. She's fouled. It won't go to the line. Good take through the defense. And Jill Bouton gets an arm on her for her first foul of the game. Second team. Yeah, that's twice that Grace has gotten into the middle of the defense and gotten to the lane. It's her third point. Went one of two, but an offensive rebound. Elson, left side to Milliser. Kicked back out to Baker. 2-3 zone for Fredericktown. Works it around. Baker will try the three, and she hits. They're going to back it into a zone. Might as well take the shot, and she converts to make it 9-5. That's yeah, something we've really come accustomed to seeing the Lady Freddies run is this 2-3 zone. Carpenter in the corner. We'll skip it across to Bellman and now to Ella Bouton. Three in the air by Sipes, short. Rebounded out by Mount Gilead. Tough start from beyond the arc for Fredericktown as they've only been able to hit one three. Take a look at the... Made three by Baker. Inbounds to Shipman. Back around. Baker off to Elson. Under three to play first quarter. Works it inside the Milliser. Spin move blocked. And taken out. Jill Bouton with her first block of the game. Averages over two per game. Something that Jill does very, very well, holding her own down low, blocking shots. Carpenter slowing things down as we hit 230 left in the quarter. And Ella gets it stripped away. Baker causes the turnover. She'll get it back. Tried looking across the lane, but turns it over. But what an effort there by Milliser to get it back. Three in the air, and it pays off. Elson with her second three. It's 12-5. Milliser getting on the floor after that ball leads to a wide open three for Elson. Let's take a look at the steal back, and just stepped right into that shot. Third three of the quarter for Mount Gilead. Gets it in to Bouton. Ella tried to get it to Sice, but she is fouled inside. That's going to be Shipman second. Quick Checking two for in. Grace. Danielle Polcott. That 
pass in is rejected and then just thrown away. Sixth turnover by Fredericktown. Into the lane, scoop layup goes. First points for Aubrey Thomas. And another steal, run out. Jumper won't go though, she was too far underneath the hoop and it's rebounded back out by Fredericktown. Almost feel like she could have took one dribble to make that a layup. Fredericktown looking to get back on the board. They've been cold as of late and they may go right there with Sipes. We take a look once again at the Thomas score. The scoop with the left. First free throw attempt for Sipes. Off the iron, no good. Foul was on Ava Baker, her first. As Maya Bryant checks back in for the Lady Freddies. Missed them both, rebound in a long pass out, but Fredericktown there, and they forced the turnover. Nice recovery there by Bouton, forced the walk. So we go under a minute left here in the opening quarter. Yeah, it's a great job by Jill to force the travel and not allow her to ball fake. As soon as she acted like she was going to go up, Jill closed out, made her go up, and then come right back down. But the Lady Freddies give it right back. Their eighth turnover of the quarter. Fourteen to five in favor of the Lady Indians. Looking to stay in the K-Mac race. Straight away three by Baker off the side, no good. But an offensive rebound. Quick put back is too strong. Ooh. Bryant goes to her back, but it goes right into the hands of Mount Gilead, and they get the score out of it. Five points for Baker. And we'll get a foul inside as we take a look at the replay one more time. It was just unlucky. Right place, right time for the Lady Indians. Baker, though, called for her second foul. Sixteen five the score. That's going to be deflected out. We'll reset. Fredericktown looking to inbound. They get it to Carpenter with ten. Bouton, well actually Bryant into the lane. She's double teamed. Deflect it off, and we'll get a foul, actually. For a second, I thought they just called it out of bounds, but they're going to get Thomas with her first, and now that's the fifth team foul against Mount Gilead already here in the first quarter. Two fouls left to give before the Lady Freddies are at the line, and as we talked about, they shoot 61% from there on the season. Inbounds turned over, and that's how the quarter will end. We've played one here in Mount Gilead. Lady Indians in control, up by 11. National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer.
second quarter underway. And it starts with the 10th ten turnover on the Lady Freddies. Travis Brody back here with Joshua Banks. And you had a scoring update from Colonel Crawford, Carey. Yeah, Carey leads the Eagles 36-30 after three. James Jones, we are unable to play our game on YouTube here tonight due to a block with the internet here. We're only on Facebook tonight. At three up in the air. No good. Rebound back out and turn back over. Millisaur does a great job fighting to get that, re that offensive rebound. Pass just a little bit too hot trying to get back out to the wing. So the Lady Freddies with their second possession of quarter number two. Carpenter. Bring it back out. Lady Freddies haven't scored since the five minute mark and it will continue there as they turn it back over. Thomas. Back out to Polcoat. Polcott gets it to Elson. And an unforced air. Sipes, spin move, puts it up and in. Nice move by Grace, her first points at 16-7. Yeah, Grace does a great job getting the steal, going down with the spin move to finish at the hoop. Wide open three from the corner, just off the mark, but it got a friendly bounce. Stallnaker with her first points. It's 19 to 7. Sipes looking to answer, cannot. Jumper too strong. Bout Bryant there with the rebound. Fredericktown down by 12. Carpenter inside the Bryant. Nice move, but too strong on the attempt. It's a great pass from Callie down, in, down low to Maya. She's another one of those young players for the Lady Freddies, though. A little bit too strong off the glass. So take a look at the friendly hometown bounce for Stallnaker. Five thirty left in the half. Nineteen to seven, Mount Gilead. Ella Bouton forced it in, deflected out, and it will stay with Fredericktown. Gets it in. Ella almost lost her balance, but gets it back. Hands off to Bryant, who gives the Carpenter. Callie tried forcing her way through the defense, gets it stripped away. Stallnaker just avoids the defender. She'll get it back along the baseline, puts it up and in. That's her spot. That corner. It's a two touchdown lead. Carpenter, right side the Bouton. Looking to get a screen from her sister, she does. I'll give it back out to Callie. Callie will try the three. Banked it, but rolled out. Lady Indians back at it, looking to extend on their 14-point lead. But we'll get a jump ball. It'll stay with Mount Gilead. So take a look at the nice jumper by Stallnaker. Three players with five or more points already for Mount Gilead tonight. Yeah, doing a great job of sharing the love tonight. The Lady Indians getting everybody involved and everybody knocking down their shots. Elbow jumper off the side iron, no good. Deflected out. And it will go to Fredericktown with 4.17 left in the half. Fredericktown looking to get something going here. They've only scored two points thus far 
in the second quarter as we hit the midway point. Bouton right side to Sipes. Lost the handle, it's turned over. 13th against the Lady Freddies. It's forced up and goes in. Shipman with her fifth point. Oh, she threw up a prayer and it was answered. On the other end, Bouton short on the three, but Bryant there with the rebound. Back out to Sipes. Sipes gets it to Bouton. Ella. And turned over. Shipman, right side. Nice pass inside to Milliser. Layup shot, no good. Rebound to Fredericktown. 3-12 left in the half. Grace gets it right side to Ella. Ella, baseline, dribbled it off of Thomas out of bounds. And it'll stay with Fredericktown with 3.06 left in the half. Lady Indians doing a great job not allowing the Lady Freddies to feed the ball in the post. Every time they get baseline, they're getting their hands in there, stripping it away, forcing them to get into another set. Carpenter. Gets it to Ella Bouton. Now to Jill in the corner, trying to post up Carpenter. They do. She puts it up and in. Good ball movement there. It's Carpenter now with seven. Yeah, Callie's one of those players. When she gets down low, when she gets the ball inside the blocker in the painted area, she's going to finish most of the time. Over to the corner. Working it across court now, right side to Stallnaker. Now to Elson, left side Baker for three, too strong. Save goes out of bounds and we'll go back to Fredericktown as we look at the nice post up move by Callie Carpenter on the other end. Sipes across the timeline. Gets it to Ella. Now to Callie Carpenter with two minutes left in the half. Now Gillia has been doing a really good job inside and doing that, forcing turnovers. The 15th against the Freddies in the first half, but a charge, offensive foul. Carpenter able to get back. Actually, it's Sipes. Gracie Sipes hustles all the way back. And it's something I noticed in the last game I covered when they played Danville and almost made a great comeback against Danville. She's just coming back from a broken ankle, and she plays like it never happened. Grace now with the ball, completely healed. <laughs> she's shown she's going to post up herself. Turnaround jumper is good. Yeah, it looks like the ankle's good. Grace with four. Skip pass back out and around to Elson. Ball ollied off of the foot of Jim, Jill Bouton. And it'll stay with Mount Gilead with 119 left in the half. Milliser gets it out to Ellison for three. Yep. Three threes for Madeline. Nine points. It's 26-11 with 110 left in the half. And she is feeling it from deep tonight. Sipes works her way into the lane. Kicks it back out under a minute to go. Ella over the Carpenter. Sipes waiting for the pick and roll, but nothing doing. Lady Freddies will reset. 1-4 high look. Looking for the back door, but just giving away. Into the lane, jump stop, layup, good. Textbook play. Jump stop, let your defender fly by you and finish at the hoop. Seven for Stallnaker. And we'll get a foul as we take a look at the bucket. 
There's your jump stop, recollection, and the lay-in. It's going to be a one and one now for Fredericktown. That'll be the first foul against Elson. Fredericktown, well, Mount Gilead had five fouls going into the second quarter, but did a good job defending as only the second with 21 seconds left. A much better job of playing the passing lanes. They weren't trying to get as handsy when the ball got inside. They were playing the passing lanes a lot better, and that's how they forced a lot of those turnovers here in the second quarter. Ella Bouton on the board now. Short on the second, and a rebound to Mount Gilead. 15 seconds left. Lady Indians will hold for the final shot. It's deflected out. They'll be able to collect and reset. Five seconds, and now it is stolen away. Carpenter, can she get there before the buzzer? She can count it in one. The concentration by Callie to be able to take that up with the right, finish through the contact that came. Stallnakers first. And Carpenter will have a chance to make it 10 points for her in the first half. She does. And that should be how the half will end. And it is. So the Lady Freddies with a bit of a run has cut this to 13 at the break. We will take a break and be back with the Ohio Means Jobs Morrow County Halftime Report. Watching K-Mac girls basketball on a Saturday evening live and free on the OH Report. light on the soy milk and gently stirred. And don't forget the sugar this time either. I'm doing fine. Don't see the vision. They look so blind. I hit my lawyer. I don't got a time. Cross on my T's and he died. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer.
This evening's Girls High School Basketball live stream brought to you live and free right here on the OH Report. Thanks to our generous sponsors, Ohio Means Jobs, Morrow County. Need a current job list? Help with your resume or practice interviewing? Morrow County, Ohio Means Jobs provides many services that can assist you. Stop in or give them a call at 419-946-8480. Park National Bank, where you mean more. BS Media Productions, if you need any media help, contact Brian Skaronsky at brian at oh.report. And Frito-Lay, we are driven and inspired by our purpose, food that matters for life's moments. We'll take another break. When we come back, the Ohio Means Jobs Morrow County Halftime Report right here, live and free on the OH Report. Light on the soy milk and gently stirred. And don't forget the sugar this time either. I'm doing fine. Don't see the vision. They look so blind. I hear my lawyer. Don't got a time. Cross on my teeth and he died. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds, or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer.
back here inside the Ohio Means Jobs Morrow County Halftime Report where your score at the break 28-15 in favor of the Lady Indians of Mount Gilead. Travis Berardi back here with Joshua Banks. Mount Gilead really took control early of this one, but the Lady Freddies with a bit of a run get some momentum towards the end of the break to try and get back in it. Yeah, they do a great job on the defensive end there in the second end of the second quarter, force some turnovers. Callie Carpenter gets down in the post. Grace Sipes gets down in the post. They're, they're smaller guards getting down in the post against the smaller guards of Mount Gilead where they know that they can kind of take control. Let's take a look at the halftime stats. 11 field goals to six. Five of those 11 field goals, though, threes for Mount Gilead. They were really good from beyond the arc there in that first half. 10-8 on the boards. They forced 16 Fredericktown turnovers to lead to some runouts as well. Both teams, one made free throw. However, the one thing in Fe Fredericktown's favor, eight fouls by Mount Gilead, three players with two fouls. Yeah, absolutely. The Mount Gilead Lady Indians are very, very, very aggressive defensively, and sometimes that can hurt you more than it plays in your favor, and that's exactly what happened there in the first half. Take a look at some individual scores from the first half. First for Fredericktown, Callie Carpenter with nine. Grace Sites with four, Ella Bouton with one, Elson with nine, Stallnaker with seven, Baker with five, Shipman with five, Thomas with two, four. The Lady Indians. That has been the Ohio Means Jobs Morrow County halftime report. That was wrong. That's why I stopped for a second. Callie Carpenter is 10 points, not 9. Almost forgot to add her free throw. Left side, 3. And just like the first half, the second half starts off well with Milliser's first points, and it's from beyond the arc. 6 nine, 3 of the evening so far for the Lady Indians, and they have been feeling it from long range all evening so far. Four different Lady Indians with three-pointers. We'll get a foul here against Mount Gilead to take a look now at the BS Media Productions replay in the three from the corner. Yeah, Millisaur, no hesitation. As soon as she caught that ball, she seen that she had space. She elevated and she knocked it down. That's Grace Shipman's third foul, so she's going to have to take a seat. Sipes. Left side to Kit Bellman. Overload on the left side for the Lady Freddies offensively. Now they'll spread it out as Carpenter off the front iron, but nearly rebounded, but on the line was Ella Bouton. And Mount Gilead will get its second possession of quarter number three. Yeah, Ella did a great job there hustling for the offensive rebound. Just couldn't quite keep her feet in bounds over there in the corner. Elson gets it to Milliser. Worked it around, deflected out. It'll stay with Mount Gilead. Just over a minute gone by. A one four low look, inbounded to Stallnaker. Over to Milliser. Can she get another three? That one too strong, but deflected back out. And once again, like Fredericktown. Unable to save it, so the Lady Freddies will get the ball. I will say there's no lack of effort from both teams here tonight. No, absolutely not. Ella Bouton, right side, gets it stripped away again. Now Gilead will come out with it, the 17th Fredericktown turnover of the evening. Straight ahead. Now left side to Stalnicker. Corner three, no good offensive board. Milliser right there, gets the bucket. Quick five points for her, time out, Fredericktown. So we take a look at the replay. And Candace. Good start to the second half. Yeah, five quick points for her. 
here to start the second half, but that's a great job on the offensive glass. Got the rebound, and instead of looking to go up through contact, found the open teammate for a little floater right down Main Street. I want to welcome everybody watching live and free this evening on the fit. OH Report Facebook page. We'll upload this game to YouTube later due to internet restrictions here at Mount Gilead High School. Chris Shaw, some purple hearts and a basketball. I'm guessing that's for Mount Gilead. Tanner Slusher. The pirate ship. You know he's rooting for Fredericktown because kind of selfish. You want Cardington to have another outright championship? We want some... We want some mayhem when it comes down to the game next week. Just kidding with you. But it's looking like right now Mount Gilead with an 18-point lead will keep that dream alive for a chance at a share at the KMAC next Saturday at Cardington. But we'll just have to wait and see. Back to action. Sipes. Gets a screen from Carpenter, thought about the three, but instead works it around, back to her in the corner. Inside the Bryant, puts it up off the glass and gets the friendly bounce. Bryant's first points, 33-17. Maya did a great job there down low, used a little spin move. Milliser for another three, she's got eight in the quarter. Millisore coming out on fire in the second half. I should say eight in the first two and a half minutes of the second half. Two of three from deep and a little floater in the lane to go on top of it. That's going to be a jump ball and a change of possession as we take a look at Candace's bucket. Lady Indians. Up 19, miscommunication, though they turn it over. With 5.03 remaining here in quarter number three. Mount Gilead, only two conference championships, 1978 and 2011. Hoping for at least maybe another one this year, at least a share. Turn it over, so back to the Lady Indians. They have never won a district championship. Right side, three in the air, yep. Stallnaker, first in the double digits for the Lady Indians with 10, it's 39-17. She loves that corner, either side. Yeah, that's tough, you don't have a backboard. You have to be precise with your shots. Sipes with an answer, no. Hits the rim, no good. Rebound out to Mount Gilead. Midway point of quarter three. Good ball fake, but still nothing doing. Elson will back it out. Right side to Thomas. She'll get into the lane right down Main Street. She's fouled and will go to the line. Great dribble drive by Thomas. That was going to be uh, going to be against Sipes, her first, team's first of the second half. First free throw, good for Thomas. Her third point, point. and it's forty to seventeen. Hits them both. And a timeout, Mount Gilead. 3.46 left in the quarter. Great start by Mount Gilead, really just shutting down any type of hope that the Lady Freddies had going into the break. Yeah, the Lady Freddies really got a nice little run going there to end the first half. But they've come out. Millisaur's knocked down two threes, two free throws there by Thomas. 
Stahl knocks down another one from the corner. I mean, they're, they're just, their offense is flowing in a way that you want to see an offense flow, especially in high school basketball. I believe they've got seven made threes on the evening now. Eight. Eight. They have eight. Took me a second to count them all up. That double-digit mark is something that a lot of teams kind of strive for when they like to shoot the three ball. And when you knock down double-digit threes, it's pretty hard to beat that team. Absolutely. Especially with a defensive game that... Mount Gilead has played this week, or this week, this tonight. This week, our games that we've covered are on the bottom line right now. All finals except for this one, as Carey knocks off Crawford to them and Mohawk alone atop the standings. 47-38, the final of that game. Right side to Stahlnicker. In the middle of her, now right side to Thomas. Mid-range jumper short, and the ball will go out of bounds and back to Fredericktown with 3.14 left in the quarter. A lot of live streams we had this week, and our graphic for girls basketball actually wrapped around half of the picture because we had so many games. Definitely a, of, a busy week. A lot of conference implications as well, including this game. Both feet were in. That's a touchdown or a catch in, in the NFL for Bowden, but it's turned over. Right down, mate. Nobody's going to get there, but a block. Thought nobody was going to get there, but out of nowhere comes Jill Bowden for her second block of the game. She had the open lane, and Jill just at the last second tracked her down. With the left hand, I mean, that's just perfectly timed there by Jill. Then use the right hand to help her back up. Good sportsmanship there. Great save and a steal. Carpenter in the Bouton. Is it a travel or is it a foul? They're going to call the foul. That's the second on Stallnaker. 2.36 left here in quarter number three. Free throw is good. First point for Jill tonight. The Lady Freddies have really tried to feed her the ball down low tonight too. Her and Ella both. And these, these Lady Indians have just done a great job of doubling as soon as they catch it, ripping it away and getting run outs. Free throw, good. Made both. Now Gilly really likes shooting from this right side here, closest to our camera angle. So that'll be a foul. They do a really good job of the driving kick, too. They beat, their, they beat their lady off the dribble, and they find that shooter in the corner. It's, it's great basketball. Yeah, very, uh, very fluent. Nice inbounds, and it's going to draw a foul. Execution right there. Stallnaker. Actually, it's Elson to the line for two. Makes the first. Absolutely textbook out-of-bounds play. That's her tenth point. Her and Stallnaker both now in double digits. She misses the second. Apologies for the jinx. Inside the Bryant. Nice pass to Bouton. Bouton will go to the line. So we've seen some good passing by both sides on each possession. Great cut by Jill. Bryant does a great job finding her as she cuts down the middle of the lane. Now she's going to shoot too. 
That's going to be on Stalnicker, her third. Bouton hits her third free throw in a row. Make it four straight, nothing but net. Four of four, and they've all been nothing but net by Jill. Mount Gilead has doubled the Fredericktown output, but they turn it over. So the Lady Indians give it back with 2.05 left. Sipes across the timeline. Good fake with her head to get the defender off her. However, it won't turn into anything. She'll get it back. And off the Carpenter. Nearly stripped. Back to Carpenter, but stolen away. Just too hectic out there. And it leads to a run out in a bucket. Great defense by the Lady Indians. The one thing the Lady Freddies want to do, if they can't feed it down low, is they want to beat you off the dribble. And they're doing a great job of help side defense, that help side defender stepping over, just like that, getting the steal, and it's leading to wide open layups. Another run out off a of steal. 14 points for Elson and a timeout, Tim Maseko. We look once again at this bucket. Wide open for the score. One oh nine left here, third quarter. 25-point lead for Mount Gilead. Coming up next for the Lady Indians. They host a very good East Knox squad who has knocked off Cardington and Northmore in their last two big matchups. East Knox did lose to Loudonville in there as well, but Loudonville is really good with Corey Vermilia, the player of the week in the nation. I mean, any time that you're from, you know, a small school like Loudonville and you've got a, an athlete that wins the national player of the week. Sipes. Gets over to Meyer Bryant. Back to Sipes. Give and go. Puts the layup off the iron. No good. Under a minute to play. Quarter three. Baker gets it out to Elson. And that'll be a turnover. Off the hands of Olivia Long. And the 14th turnover on Mount Gilead this evening. Sipes. Double team gets it back out and around. Bouton for three. Didn't get anything. Ella just has not been able to find her range this evening. Gracie Lester into the game for the Lady Freddies. Got the inbounds, 20 seconds left. Into the lane, nice pass underneath the hoop. Scoop won't go though. And we'll get a foul at midcourt. That's gonna be on Baker, her third. 10 seconds exactly left here in quarter three. Five seconds. Bouton gets her own rebound. She'll go to the line. Oh, it does a great job there. Gets to the lane. Can't finish. 
Stays with it, and she's going to go to the line for two. Fouls against Milliser. Her first. Free throw good. Second point for Ella. Olivia Long checking back in for Candace. In and out on the second offensive rebound, put back in another foul. So now Maya Bryant will go to the line. That ball just bounced right into Maya's hands. That's the third on Thomas. So now four Lady Indians with three fouls, but Maya misses the first. Point seven seconds left now in the quarter. Misses both. Rebound, and that's the quarter. We've played three here at Mount Gilead. Lady Indians have this one in control, up by 24. National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. Fourth quarter underway here, Fredericktown with the opening possession of the fourth. Carpenter works around, gets the layup to fall. Cali with 12, her first points of the second half. It's 46-24. Travis Brardy alongside Joshua Banks from Mount Gilead. Lady Indians on their way to getting back into this title race in the K-Mac. That'll be a foul on Sipes. Her second. With East Knox win over Cardington this afternoon. And if Mount Gilead can finish this out in the final 726, it'll be a one game deficit for the Lady Indians. And they still head to Cardington for that rivalry matchup down at the Pirate Ship on Saturday. Layup, good, good answer. Elson now with 16 to lead all scores. Great backdoor cut. Great pass, finished at the rim. Sipes gets it to Bouton and the Carpenter. Carpenter baseline, kicks it back out. Bouton for three and again short. They've just been off tonight on those three-point attempts. Yeah, just not able to find the range. Cali knocked one down in the first quarter. Other than that, they just haven't been able to knock them down at all this evening. Mount Gilead running some clock here. Knocked out of bounds, and it will go to Fredericktown. Sipes. Stolen away. Elson into the lane. Bucket good. 18 for her. 
50 to 24 with under six to go. Looking like she's gonna be our MVP tonight. She's done everything, defensively, offensively. She's been all over the place. Bouton trying to give it to her sister. Great save, though. As Bellman will drive baseline, kick it back out to Sipes for three, and that's just off the front of the iron. No good. Nice give and go inside. Layup too strong, but an offensive board. Thread the needle with that pass, but it'll come back out to reset. Stahlnicker, strong on that one. Pushing it ahead to Bouton. Ella underneath the bucket just throws it away. Great pass, but right back and out of bounds. I like the idea there, but it caught Milliser off guard. Great job by Jill Bouton, too, to get back and play that defense to force the turnover. Yeah, the two blocks that she's had have both been on hustle plays, getting back on the defensive end. So it's a great idea on the give and go there. Bryant waiting for somebody to get open. They get it inside to Sipes. Sipes back out to Bellman, now to Bouton. Bouton throws it right into the hands of Elson. Elson lays it up off the iron, no good. And out of bounds to stay with Mount Gilead. And again, that's great defense by Bouton to not let that layup be easy. Milliser layup shot off the iron again, but another offensive board. However, it's stolen away. Four minutes left in regulation. Sipes. She's going to get bumped and fouled. Foul will go against Milliser. Her second. One and one for Grace. First free throw. Hits the front of the iron, rolls in. Friendly roll there for Grace. It seems like the rim's on the left side of your screen. A little bit looser, allowing to get the friendly bounce. The right side, not as much. Absolutely. Made both. Six points for Grace Sipes tonight. Baker. Gets it to Milliser. Thought about the three. Instead gives it to Elson. Telegraphed and stolen away by Sipes. She saves it. Ball on the ground. And it will be a jump ball. And it will go back to Mount Gilead. Another and hustle play by both sides. So say even in a 24-point game, you've still got both the teams hustling their tails off, fighting for every loose ball, every possession. Elson lost the handle for a second, gives it to Milliser. She has it in the corner. Kicks across, but too strong, and it's a turnover. 43 combined turnovers this evening. Sipes will set things up as we hit three minutes left in the game. Good pick and roll, but off the mark. Shipman gives it off. Three in the air, rolls around and through. Baker with her second three. She has eight points. It's 53-26. And they continue to shoot it. And the reserves now into the game. Well, 
to the desk to get into the game as it's five straight for Baker. She's got 10 points now. The third Lady Indian into double figures. Carpenter bumped and fouled, and that'll allow the mass substitution that's coming up. It'll be a one and one. Fouls on Elson, her second. But that won't matter. She's going to check out. Free throws, no good. Offensive rebound. Fountain, layup. In and out. Tough break. That ball touched every part of the rim for Ella before it popped out. We'll get another substitution. Two twenty five left. Freshly into the game. It's Abby Leonard deflected out. He'll stay with Mount Gilead. Olivia Harrison for Fredericktown. That'll be a double dribble. Gracie Lester in as well, both Bouton sisters. And Vika Arnett. Going to get a foul against Thomas. That'll be her fourth. And it will put to the line Olivia Harris. Timeout, Mount Gilead. Well, we have a moment. It's time to thank our sponsors one more time this evening. Ohio means jobs. Morrow County, need a current job list? Help with your resume or practice interviewing? Morrow County, Ohio Means Jobs provides many services that can assist you. Stop in or give them a call at 419-946-8480. BS Media Productions, Park National Bank, where you mean more, and Frito-Lay. We are driven and inspired by our purpose, food that matters for life's moments. Thank you all, sponsors, for allowing us to bring you these games live and free, as always, right here on the OH Report. Harris off the iron, no good with the first. Offensive rebound put back good, though, by Bouton. Ella with her first bucket of the day. Finally able to get one to go for Ella. Nearly a steal. Tatum Neal, though, hands it back off. Now the long for two. No good. Rebound to Fredericktown. Harris. Right side, Bouton tries to drive baseline. Deflects off, and it'll stay with Fredericktown with 87 seconds left in regulation. Jill will check out for Kit Bellman. Runner is short. And a rebound by Mount Gilead. And we'll get a foul. Inbounds is stolen away. Layup, good. Quickly the other way.
One minute left. Bouton nearly got the steal. Kicks it back out. Two in the air. Short. Rebound to Fredericktown. Over to Bouton. Now to Harris. She's going to try a three, and she's blocked. And we're going to get a fifth foul on Aubrey Thomas. She will finish with four points for Mount Gilead. Fifty-five thirty. Harris misses the first. One more shot. Harris's second attempt. They declared her foot was on the line, so she doesn't get three free throws. She only got two. She'll get her own rebound, though. From the elbow, off the glass, no good. Rebound to Mount Gilead with 30 seconds left. Polcott turns it over. Nearly a backcourt violation. But Gracie Lester gets it to Harris. Harris ball fakes. Back out to Gracie. Into the lane, runner, yes. Lillian Rose. And that'll do it. It's a final. Mount Gilead moves to within a game of the K-Mac lead. They win it 55-32. We'll take a break. When we come back, the MVP in our post game right here live and free on the OH Report. Light on the soy milk and gently stirred. And don't forget the sugar this time either. I'm doing fine. Don't see the vision. They look so blind. I hit my lawyer. I don't got a time. Crossing my teeth and he died. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds, or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer.
time now for our Park National Bank player of the game. And it is, let me brighten her up right now. <laughs> Madeline Elson, the senior guard for Mount Gilead. A game high, 18 points as Mount Gilead defeats Fredericktown 55-32. First of all, Madeline, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, nine in the first, nine in the second, a pretty even game for you. Just uh, what were you able to do in there? It seemed like you were able to frustrate Fredericktown a lot, causing 26 turnovers, but you yourself in transition, mm -hmm. you get out in front of them and you score. Yeah, um, I honestly have to give that all to Candice Millizer. Um, she's really great at getting those steals on the defensive end, and I just kind of leak out, and she's always looking for me down the court. So, honestly, that's all That's all thanks to her. Um, you guys out to a 17-5 lead after one. Mm -hmm. It seemed like you are going to run away with it, but then Fredericktown made a bit of a run right at the end of the half. Yeah. What did Coach tell you guys at the half to just regroup and then run away with it in the second? Um, he kind of just told us, he was like, we're still in this um, just because it's kind of getting closer doesn't mean that this is over and that we can't take our foot off the gas and we can't let up in the, the second half because the first four minutes of that third quarter is – it kind of determines the rest of the game. So we just really had to focus on bringing energy in the second half, just like we did in the first half. So you already know East Knox upset Cardington yeah. earlier today. You get East Knox, and then you get Cardington. Mm -hmm. What do you guys need to do first to knock off East Knox, who's been coming on really well as of late? They've already beaten Northmore. Mm -hmm. They've beaten Cardington. What do you need to knock them off first before you get to the game? Right. Um, I think we really need to work on our um, – our our man offense, so I think we're going to focus on that with um, before hitting them because I think we struggle a little bit on that, so we're going to focus on working on our man offense. Um, just looking at the banner, two conference championships. Yeah. You got a chance for that third. Mm -hmm. Just uh, how does it feel to be in contention this late and to have a chance to at least get a piece by knocking off a rival at the end of the mm -hmm. week if you get past East Knox? Um, really good. I. I think we were a little nervous at the start when we started losing games. We were a little sad that we had put in all this work and it was kind of kind of far away from us now. But we're really glad that we're back in it and that we still have a chance now to take the KMAC title. All right. Lastly, as always, you want to look into this camera, give anybody a shout-out, go for it. Um, I'm going to give Lance Stoniker a shout-out. Happy birthday, Lance. Happy birthday, <laughs> Lance. There we go. All right, Madeline Elson, game high, 18 points as Mount Gilead, two wins away in conference from a conference championship. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll take a break. When we come back, we will wrap things up here from Mount Gilead. Park National Bank treats your dreams like they're our own. It could be buying your first home together or making a lasting impact in your community, starting a new business on your old stomping grounds, or reimagining your current one to keep up with the times. No matter your financial goals, at Park National Bank, what means a lot to you means a lot to us. Um, I know that I'm not Park's biggest customer, but I'm treated just like I'm Park's biggest customer. Back here with the Ohio Means Jobs post-game show, Morrow County, Ohio Means Jobs. Travis Berardi alongside Joshua Banks as Mount Gilead wins this one 55-32 to as fans still sticking around to celebrate this victory. Uh, it was... All but for maybe a two-minute section of this one, Josh. All Mount Gilead. Yeah, Mount Gilead came out in the first quarter, really took control of this game. Offensively, defensively, kind of had their way. The Freddies kind of made a run there late in the second quarter. And then Mount Gilead came out in the second half and said it's not happening today. They put their foot on the gas, and they never took it off for the rest of the night. Let's now take a look at the final stats. Once again, brought to you by Ohio Means Jobs, Morrow County. There we go. 21 field goals to 11, nine threes to one. Both teams finish out with 19 boards. 
8-5, offensive glass was Fredericktown. 14-11 was Mount Gilead. Turnovers, though, was a big thing. Mount Gilead did turn the ball over a lot in the fourth quarter, but it was after the fact. They forced 26 turnovers. Fredericktown, though, 9-19 from the free throw line, something they need to work on, but they did get to the foul line a lot. Mount Gilead was 4-6. of six. Pretty cut and dry when you look at the stats. Yeah, I mean, the Lady Freddies missed 10 free throws and get outscored by 15 from the on the arc. Those two numbers right there are the difference in the ball game. Absolutely. Final scoring, Fredericktown, Carpenter with 12, Seitz with six, both Bowtons with four, Bellman, Bryant with two. As for Mount Gilead, they were led by Elson's game high 18, Stallnaker with 10, Baker with 10, Millizer with 8, Shipman with 5, Aubrey Thomas with 4. Score by quarter, 17-5 Mount Gilead after 1, 11-10 Mount Gilead after 2 for a 28-15 halftime lead. They then started running away with it after 3 with an 18-7 third quarter to make it 46-22. Fredericktown outscores Mount Gilead 10-9 for your 55-32 final. Any final words for you, Mr. Banks? It was fun. Mount Gilead handled the game from start to finish. I'm excited to see him play East Knox. And then really excited for next Saturday night. That rivalry game is going to be a lot of fun. That'll do it here from Mount Gilead High School. I want to thank everybody that helped make things possible. Joshua Banks, color commentary and camera tonight. Well done. I want to thank Adam Thompson, our audio video tech, back at BS Media Productions OH Report. BS Media Productions as well, our instant replay sponsor, Park National Bank MVP sponsor, Ohio Means Jobs, Morrow County, our commercial, our pre halftime post and scoreboard sponsor, Park National Bank and Frito Lay, our commercial sponsors. I want to thank the fine folks here at Mount Gilead High School for allowing us to be here tonight to bring you this game live and free. And most importantly, we want to thank you, the fans, for watching. Mount Gilead, a game back with two to go. In the KMAX standings, for Joshua Banks, I'm Travis Berardi saying so long from Mount Gilead.